The division has emerged in the camp of the pan yoruba socio-political organization, Afeni Ferry, following last Sunday's endorsement of the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinumbu, by the former national leader of the group, Pa Ruben Fashanroti. Fashanroti were announced in March 2021 that he was stepping down from the leadership of Afeni Ferry. Blessed Tinumbu who paid him a visit in his Akure home in Undo State. However, some members of the group, including the group's leader, Pa Ayo Adibanjo, who had earlier announced that Afeni Ferry had endorsed the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, and the Secretary General of the Association, Chief Shola Ebisheni, were not at the meeting. Speaking on why he visited Fashorosi, Tinumbu said he was in the Afeni Ferry's leader's house to present his presidential action plan to the non Nigerian Yoruba leader. Afeni Ferry leader Ayo Adibanjo joins us now to shed more light on the position of the group on the 2023 presidential election. Glad to have you join us on Newsday. Thank you so much for coming to the program. Thank you, Tim Well, sir, I'd like to ask, start by asking for your take on Pa Ruben Fashanati's stance that he's still the leader of Afeni Ferry and the group is endorsing the candidacy of Bola Tinumbu, not Peter Obi? Um, my, my, my answer is simple. I understand the letter he wrote resigning due to old age and asking me to continue is already viral. I have nothing more to say to her to that, that one. And I'm, I'm not receiving letter withdrawing. And as a matter of fact, I don't want to be brought to controversy by it because I know the purpose of those who went in there, which I warned him before that they want to cause confusion and fairly, fairly, and I'm not going to lend my name to that fact. When he phoned me that you are coming and that he wanted to, he didn't want him to come, I said, no, you are not a racist man. If you want to come, as if you call. But for the fact that you have phoned me, I wouldn't have said anything about it because I know about the conspiracy over a month ago that you want to have something to split up and ferry, which I've been trying to do over the years. And I think it's not enjoyable enough to hold on that. But what they are coming to do is for you to bless him. But just tell them I felt very a second stand and that's where you are. No more, no less. Don't get yourself involved in the name of the mess. And I said, I help her, please. And I told one or two other things, which is not for this discussion, for him to remember. But when they now say he has done that, he has done that, I won't go into that controversy now, because that will be a diversion. That will be the purpose of those who intentionally went there to go to a leader who has already resigned over two years ago. Well, you, 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 so I don't want to go into that at all. Well, it become personal, and I want to avoid anything not on issue. On the election of OB, the criticism and the, uh, uh, the support must be based on issue. Forget tribalism and everything. So any question on that should be on that. On the question of whether they went to him or not, that is my answer. No more, no less. And since obviously this uh, plot to divide uh, the Afeni Ferry group by causing this uh, 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 confusion, so to speak, uh, moving forward, how will the Afeni Ferry, will they be making a statement to clarify uh, exactly their stance? And also, have you been able to speak to Pa Fasoranti uh, after this Akure meeting? No, I have no reason to. Because it was he who told me, it was they are coming and advising. He has not called me again. There's no reason to, he's an elderly person. And he knows all the tricks that Tinubu has been doing all along. And I told him, don't let us get ourselves involved with this controversy. And I want to avoid everything from making it personal. There's nothing that I'm going to say about this election other than the statement I made. I made a comprehensive statement why we are supporting OB, and that's where we stand. 
I need to give a constitutional historical background while we are taking that sign. We are not just taking the sign now. It's a sign based on the principle how the whole country came together. And that we should not go outside that. Anything that will make the country united, we must do. If you go outside this, you will be in trouble. The trouble we are in is because the military set aside the constitution that brought us together in 1960. And if you go back to that constitution, you will get peace. And you can't do that by, by, by ignoring a section of the country in taking part in the presidency. The presidency is not a European and Igbo affair. It's a national affair. And I'm very fair, it's a national party under the name of Action Group founded by Shiva Olo. It's on that philosophy and principle we have been active. And if people remember the time they gave me after I resumed my office, that will be the new thing I'm going to do. I said, nothing new. Maybe what the emphasis I'll be doing is what I'm going to continue. Because I find it as a principle of existence. We have a corporate idea. We have nobody debating from that. So I can only be accused of going outside that. It is also go outside what I find if I actually stood for that can query me. Anything outside it, I won't be involved in any politics. Now, Chief Advanjo, I'd like to know, when you announced the decision that Afeni Ferry is endorsing Peter Obi, was it done in agreement with other group members, or was it just a decision taken by a few members of your group? I'm asking this due to the fact that almost immediately after your press conference, Chief Olufalaye denied endorsing Peter Obi, saying that he will consider all important parameters before endorsing any candidate. So I'd like to know if that announcement endorsing Peter will be was made by, was an agreement with every member of the group or just a select few. My, my dear, my dear, don't get carried away by the detractors. My secretary has spoken. It was a decision taken by the executive and the general meeting of the party on various occasions. Go and read the statement made by the general secretary, shall I be shaming? We shall be published on that if go. So anybody, when that is, uh, <laughs> I don't want to bring anything past that here. Onu finally has left the past, has resigned from politics about three or four or five years ago when he was 80. He said he was too old. Is it that, is, is it, am I to consult, go and consult those who are old? And when last I say I attended a very, very meeting, you see, Tim uh, Topper, this is the type of thing I try to avoid under this controversy. Because you bring in a lot of things that are not relevant for the purpose of this election. Can you imagine people who have never been to a very, very meeting for the past three or four years saying that they have not been consulted? So I'm not going to do, go to that controversy. My executive has spoken, the general has spoken, those who are in the party have spoken. It is not those who have left or those who have decided themselves. And if you look at that delegation that went to Shifa uh, Chonzi, they are the Yoruba members of APC. BC Akode, Bengadane, and so you know all of them there. Uh, General Akine, they, they are all members of the APC. The only same fellow I found that is uh, Bishop, uh, uh, Bishop, uh, uh, Bishop, uh, I don't remember his name, but, but I understand the invitation they use is not for a very, very, they say you might do that. Some of them have been misled there, but I'm not saying for that anybody can go and visit anybody. Yeah. But the, the, the constitutional body of Afeni very, very got approved of it. Anybody who is not Afeni Ferry, any Yoruba man is not, every Yoruba man is not Afeni Ferry. And I don't speak for the Yoruba man, I speak for Afeni Ferry members. All right. And not all Yoruba are Afeni Ferry. Well, well, well said, sir. Uh, 
What do you make of others? And this is still piggybacking off of your endorsement of Hichirobi of the Labor Party. What do you make of others like um, an ambassador, Yemi Farombi, who claimed that at Fenny Fair, instead of endorsing one particular candidate and knowing that uh, some controversy could come of this, they should have just provided a forum for all candidates to present their visions and their missions, uh, somewhat uh, similar to what the Arawa Consultative Forum and other groups are doing. And it might be a little bit too early in the race to endorse one particular candidate. What are your thoughts on that, sir? My dear T. T. Uh, Tope. Awa, that's awa, sir. On what basis, on what ground is fine? Is... I said that was Hawa. On what basis, on what ground? There is a confusion here. Go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. On what basis is that? On what basis Farouk B questioning me? Is he a member of the ferry? Don't bring me any serious factors here. Those who have been said in this matter, I don't address that. I don't want anybody to confuse the issue. Constitute, I am a ferry ferry leader. We have taken a stand. Is it a member of a family family who is now saying no? Or what basis is they no? I don't say everybody in Yoruba land has supported. Everybody has their best interest. I'm speaking for existing members of a family family. Is it anybody who now is a member of a family family in the executive or something that can talk? So, sir, with um, Bola Tinumbu allegedly getting an endorsement from her fashion and other chieftains who, and others who regard themselves as chieftains of Afeni Ferry, how do you think this will affect Peter Obi's chances at the polls, especially since it's clearly becoming obvious that um, ethnicity will play a role in the elections? Uh, <laughs> we're all Nigerians. I don't expect them to to agree on something. That's the essence of democracy. We all gave our reason for supporting him. And don't say everybody in our very Don't take the propaganda of the opponents. Take what I'm saying. I'm challenging the authority to attack my son when they are not our members. I don't speak for every Yoruba man. That is what you should address. <laughs> if anybody comes and says, I'm a Yoruba man, that I don't agree. I don't force every Obama to come with you. Those of, those of us in Afeni Ferry who took a decision at a meeting, several meetings, are sent by my secretary. Those are the people I'm talking for. And I'm conscious of the fact that not all Yoruba agree. Even when Afeni Ferry was founded by Shifaolo, not all Yoruba agree with us. We have the Benson, we have the Ofo uh, Yekus, we have those of them who may not be talking now, don't know. So, David Obadu, let us spread the thing. We are talking about issues at Ferry Ferry and Yoruba land. Members of Ferry Ferry talking. Member of is talking. So that's my stance. And whether they follow or not, David Obadu is politics. We're going to present our case. I have stated our case in the statement I issued. Why are we supporting Loki? the constitutional and the logical and the equitable reasons for it. I've stated this. Those are the things they should address. They should tell us that the rotation system that I claim that the Europeans have done their own, which is qualified, uh, now. That's what I'm saying. They, none of them can claim to love the Europa people than I, I, and the banjo. No Yoruba man living. I'm challenging them to come out. Who are we protecting the sense of Yoruba man than I am a different year? Those of them living, any Yoruba man living, let him come out. Or any organization living that surpasses a fairy fairy in protecting Yoruba interests. This is not a Yoruba matter. This is not a question between Yoruba and the Hebrews. And if that were the case, we are the best champion of the people. But this is a equitable thing for the unity of the country. That is what they should address. 
They should deny whether we should have the second chance when one of us has not had the chance. Those are the facts that issue. I only did not oppose the Tinubu. I am also, also opposed to Atiku. How can a, a full animal rule for eight years and another full animal going by there? Those are the issues. Let's not base this election on issues, not on sentiment. And if you read my statement, when I first announced our support for Southeast, I even didn't know who was going to be the candidate there. It's on principle and on certain ideas. It is those ideas that you challenge that doesn't exist or that I am wrong. They shouldn't bring in any price line on sentimental matters. I won't I won't accuse of them of any other serious but that's the affair. But that is my own case. It is the case that they should address. Address the message. Forget the message, yeah. And sir, you've been talking about the fact that you, Afeni Ferre, endorsed Labour Party candidate Peter Obi on the principles of equity uh, and fair, uh, federal character as enshrined within our constitution. And, you know, we believe that power Thank shifts to, should shift to the southeast. As you talk about it, it, it makes sense to us. It's, very, it's a very clear argument. Is this an argument that uh, Pa Fasharanti is, is unaware of on your own side? What, what manner of discussions have taken place between yourself or even Afeni Fera members and the old leader of Afeni Fera? And did he not understand the, um, the power rotation? And what would be his motivations to endorse um, Tinubu otherwise? My dear, my dear, I'm speaking as the leader of a fairy fairy. But I've actually resigned on, 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 on air grounds and on old age. That is the issue. A, a man who is not in office cannot be speaking for a fairy fairy. That is where he should attack me. Whether he has resigned or not, the letter of the region is, 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 is in circulation. Those are the issues you should address. Whatever motive he has now to support, to be speaking, as if you are sitting in office, you should ask him that question. Or you should ask him, have you not designed? Did you not appoint your Yeshiva I know that you said in the letter you are appointing me. Go and read it. I don't want any controversy over it. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Let us concentrate on why I'm busy. What are the reasons to keep the country together or to separate? Those are the issues, James O'Brien. And I want her to confine herself to that. Because this it is not the question. Presidency is not between the Yorubas and the Igbos. It's a national matter. I've been emphasizing that. Question those people who are not talking about the hey, Tinubu, this, Tinubu, that. Uh, I'm not talking about this question of whether it's qualified or not now. But the basic that it is not the turn of his uh, region. His region has already had its share. The Yoruba people don't believe in cheating. Now, Chief Adebaum, join me. But they should deny when the Southeast has ever had a appointment. Chief Adebaum, when you are pressed, man, your duty as the fourth asset of the realm is to educate the people and inform the people and guide those who are our politicians. Those who are talking this one, place before them what the periphery is saying, the grounds, and let them do for those grounds. Don't bring in any external matter. Very well said, sir. But earlier, you spoke about a conspiracy to divide Afeniferi, which you said has been ongoing for a while. Yes. So I'd like to ask yes. you what steps, you know, the group, Afeniferi, or its executive members will be taking to prevent such divisions or attempts to divide the group going forward. I am all in love with this game. Those who are going to conspire, we continue. But we don't can face them. That's why I don't pay attention to them. When they are doing all this in, over a month or two ago, it's just in there. And on this issue, the Yorubas know their leaders. Don't let us divide the discussion to, are you the senior or do they don't know? It's 
an open market. I very, very under my leadership, I said in this case, let people accuse us of falsify our position on those basis. No, they don't know that thing. Okay, let's let's move on to talk about Labour Party candidate Peter Obi, who, of course, the uh, Afeni Fair has come out to vehemently support his uh, candidacy so far on the campaign trail. I'd like to give, I'd like for you to give an assessment so far of how well um, him and uh, Kashim Shetima have done so far. There have been criticisms uh, regarding the fact that it lacks structure. Of course, um, there are issues with the uh, trolls on social media. But just on the positive, uh, on uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, the Obidati uh, ticket, excuse me. Um, I want to know what you think about their, uh, their campaign so far. My dear Jim is that the public to judge? You will see the performance of everybody, and you know the integrity of everybody. It's not for me, I'm part of the people in this show. That is why we are selling ourselves to the public. You are members of the public, are members of the press. You should assess us by our antecedents, by our, by, 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 by our record, by our past performance. It is not for me to say I'm saying they have accepted it. Whether they have accepted it or not, everybody will know that the polls. That is why we will be talking, we will be selling themselves now. I believe we have a very formidable and very marketable project in BBOD. And we will be giving the decision when the, as the campaign goes on. Those who have a superior argument, let them give it. And let the public join. That is the issue. Now, you've spoken severally about the need to restructure the country and possibly draft a new constitution that will be acceptable to all. I'd like to know if you think Peter Obi can achieve this or if Afeni Ferry is just supporting him based on the fact that he's um, from the Igbo tribe. Not at all, not at all. We are always assessing people on principle and on basic things. If it is not agree on the why and how for a better Nigeria to change this system of corruption and everything, I will back him. After all, it's not the only people contesting the election. But I hope, I hope you know that. And, and that is contained in my statement. That before we arrive on him, when I was supporting Southeast, I don't know which candidate is coming there. I was the first one now that of uh, 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 support Southeast before we know who are the candidates. And when the candidates came out, we assessed all of them. I didn't assess anybody else as Southeast. You can check up from uh, 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 Parklak, where he said we should invite all candidates. I said no. The Yorubas have been saying that the, when the person you don't want to give your daughter, you don't have to tell him, don't, you don't have to give him the conditions. Well, you know, I'm not going to give him enter the full normal and pay waffle. If you don't understand the temperature, you take it up by your mama anyway. If somebody comes to you to have your daughter in marriage, and you already know he has, bad, he has a bad background, you're not going to give him. Why are you telling him, if you marry my daughter, don't beat her, don't do that. There's no need for it. Well, you already know that I'm not going, I'm not going to give him. So that's the position. All right, sir, you obviously have been around for quite a while and seen a lot of election cycles and seen a lot in your life as a, an elder in the party and in Nigeria in general. With the state of insecurity that the country is currently facing, it's, it's certainly something to be worried about. Uh, we have been watching the security forces battle it uh, with their full chest for a few months now, but we know that the situation persists and we are in a pre-election year. What do you feel? Uh, do you feel that the elections will be able to go on as scheduled, seeing as the security threats 
uh, seem to be increasing. And has there been another situation in Nigeria where insecurity was quite uh, rife and maybe elections seemed like they might not go on? And how was that overcome? If ever there was a situation like that, how do you see the elections playing out in terms of the safety and security of people going out to vote in the polls? Thank you. Thank you. The number I know you have been on public affairs in that program. If you have been following our assessment, my assessment in particular, I am one of those who say there should be no election until this constitution is changed. In one of the segments of our very we said there must be an interim government to conduct this election because of the security position. But not many agree with me, but yet I have to move on. It is the one available by the majority that I'm joining. And I'm joining the those who, who might believe if they get there, they make a better show. That is summary. There's nothing I'm talking about security that I'm not talking about. And I've talked to the extent that I said, what is behind those who are doing Boko Haram? Do, 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 do. I've said it. But you didn't take it take up. And it was on your own program that could allow me said that Buhari knew those who are behind the coup go around. Okay. And uh, uh, Malami also said that the names. They are not putting them. And Commander Laubi said, those who are behind the coup go around are in the cabinet of Buhari. They are city governors. They are in the parliament. They are in Senate. They are some members of the representatives. Uh, in the of representatives. There will be no reaction of the government. You see where we are? And I have tried them to come and arrest me for fake news. They have refused to come. Because the evidence I'm giving is, beyond, is, 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 is a public property. Chief Father Banjo. Oh, allow me to see that lie. You see? Yes. Please allow me to interrupt you briefly, sir. It seems there's a disconnect between the leadership of the country and the, and the people that they are leading. You just talked about the fact that there's so much insecurity and you feel that things need to be in place before we hold the elections. But as you are saying that, the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, says this current administration has transformed Nigeria. They've tackled insecurity. They've empowered Nigerians. So how do we now <laughs> explain this disconnect? Why, do, why is there a disconnect between the leadership and the followers? My dear TV talk, I know you press me, you just want to drop off of my mouth. Are you not aware of yourself? Are you just asking that question? Are you a stranger in this country? My name is just talking as attorney general to a, to, to a government that has failed to perform. That has been the worst of the government in this country before people like you are born. Nigeria has never suffered such a bit. Such a disaster as Buhari government. Not one. You have said now that I've got one. I've been there before the independence. Buhari, there's nothing to compare in progress, in security, in everything that can be worse than that of Buhari. Buhari is the greatest disaster that Nigeria has ever had. And that's why I said in one of my interviews, God save Nigeria. Our solution is not that God should help us to get rid of worry and then can have peace. Make of the CBN's recent decision to reissue the 200. No, no. It's, it's actually Jeff, how I now, sir. Let me take you back. Let me take you back to what you told me about security. The man is talking about security. The governors of the state, you refuse to arm them. And those who are attacking us are armed. You say, no, they can't bear arms. And under the constitution, they are the chief security officer of the state. You make them a left governors. As a result, the people of the Western region found them about them for the condition of power to the state to defend themselves. You say, no, they can't carry arms. But this Allah, who is carrying AK for the saving? They are free to. You have not banned them. Well, you press men. You do, do us a favor. 
to tell us that we have a government that is aiding and abetting criminals. Is, that, is he making an arrangement to arrange for kidnappers? Gumi is there, is there a weak man? But he refused to call me. Hey, 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 I mean, why do you want to leave Nigeria? Other than that, they are oppressing him. The court of the country say, leave this man. He say, no. We are not a military regime. I am too, I am an embittered old man. Well, I've never seen this man in my life. And this one in Nigeria that I fight for. So when people bring in relevant problems, I don't want to appreciate it. My prayer now is that this election may be free and fair for a reasonable person like uh, Obi to be in the reign of power so that you can change the voting system as much as possible. Because the government has ruined the whole country. Well, and it's galvanizing about today's Jamaica, tomorrow is in London. They join himself. Flow the sky knows our way all over. It doesn't matter. Well, Pa Adebanjo, God, God just save Nigeria. Amen, amen. Uh, just a heads up, it's two of us in the studio this afternoon. Timmy Tokba and myself. I'm Hawa. I wish I could go by my Yoruba name, but who, this who, is sticking who, here who, for now. Who, it's Hawa. Hawa. Who is the next? Who is Hawa. the next person? Hawa. Sir. I remember you. Who is the next other name? Hawa. Yes, sir. Um, so what's the name? Hawa, Hawa, yes, sir. Um, Hawa, oh, I see. Yes. I, I, have, been, I have been seeing you to talk all along in other program. I thought yes. you have left the uh, um, uh, arise, but it's, I know that, it's, that it's quite that all right. right. It is quite all right, sir. Thank but you. um, moving on from uh, this discussion, uh, I was asking you earlier about the CBN's. Uh, uh, you know, decision to redesign the and reissue the 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes. Um, it came to us a bit of as a shock because we know that by January, all the old notes uh, would have been mopped off, off the, the roads and the streets and the new Naira notes would be issued. Now, the reasons being given to us is it will uh, help with insecurity in terms of kidnappers paying ransom in Naira and also uh, mopping up the, the Naira from the other markets and uh, shady corners where it tends to circulate. The other is for elections. And we know that elections are fraught with vote buying and all sorts. So this is also supposed to help with uh, the smooth sailing of elections come February. What is your uh, opinion on this introduction at this particular time um, of our electoral season? Well, it's a very hard decision to take, but I think it's a right decision. There is no decision that is right that you don't have obstacles. There is no doubt that the time for it is too short and have some other implications. But the reason the, 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 the government of Central Bank can give is very, very crucial for this moment. For those who have stolen money to go and bribe people for the election. It, those who want to falsify the mandate of the people through money. They want to and that is that is crucial to me. That is very important to me. Because if they, if they make this situation not, not credible, we are done for. There's not that, that there's not a bit of a problem arising. I hope the government will be able to cope with that. But the question of for sure, those who are going to bribe the election is very, very major. And for the war, for once, for once, I agree with Buhari for endorsing the government of Central Park. Both of them are not my friend, but uh, I, 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 I don't carry prejudice when they do the right thing. She Raoulot told me, even if my enemy does the right thing, you commend him. On this occasion, I commend the Central Bank and Buhari. Now, one of the key issues going into the 2023 election is getting a leader that can unify the country. The country, as we know right now, is so divided along religious and ethnic lines and even generational lines 
with it being said that it's the youth or maybe the Sorosuke generation that are supporting the Labour Party candidate, Peter Obi. So how do you think we can bridge this divide where politics is not just about religion, ethnicity, or even who you know that's talking about um, having a godfather? How do you think we can overcome this? Thank you very much. Anybody who is thinking the way you are thinking you should vote for one, I should vote for uh, Obidat campaign. He's the only man that unite the country. Anything outside it, you are dividing the country the more. Right in that, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a passing message. At 94, how many of my age are alive? But we must warn you people, you can't have a united country where you discriminate against a section of the country. If you want us to separate, let us separate in peace. You can't say we are together and you discriminate against that. Or people who get there and discriminate. We know all the force of what we will see. All the claims that we are alleging against Obi as an evil and all that. Many of them were allegations before Obi himself was born. I am in a position to know that. But that is not the issue now. All those are things of the past. The man who can hold the country today forward in unity. Let's be there. That is running man there, fantastic fellow, intelligent, hardworking, progressive. Is that the question whether it's Lani or not? You look at their criteria, their category. There are not people who made money by, by, by government contracts. We go, we go there when we get to the election. Or be the man to unite the country. Or be the man to say, you are either you are evil or outside. It doesn't matter. What is matter is that the stress of Nigeria. And if anybody listens to me, unfortunately, how many of you are remaining? The type of Nigeria that we fought for is the only bill that can carry it out and, and, and it's running mate. They can see into the future. All the past is this and all that. Forget it. We want to move forward. Obi's administration is not only changing the personnel, we want to change the system. We are them talking about being a government without being a millionaire. Tim Duncan, imagine what this country is. As any of those principal parties. If you are not a billionaire, how can you be a president? If you are not a billionaire, how can you be a governor? When you say you don't want to be a governor, a graduate, well educated, come and pay 100 million. Even to be a councillor, those are the systems we want to change. Those are the systems we are supporting him to change. So that it will be easy for the people which are intelligent and all that, to become the president of this country without being a millionaire. This is for your intelligence and your ability. That's what we are fighting for. Whether I will be with or not, what will be the benefit of our individual? What I'm expressing as my full advantage. What I must say is for you people, if you turn a dead guy to me, you will be the sufferer, not me. I'll be enjoying myself in the grave. But those other people, Open your eyes. You don't allow to be carried away by money, by anything, or by any propaganda. They have plenty of naira and the dollar to spend. Oh, be candidates, we have no money to spend, but we spend our ideas that this country must be better for you. For people like you, the young girls and young women. Yeah. Well said. Sir. And a government that can afford our university to be closed for nine months. That is what will be stands for, to change the thing. The flood is carrying those away, the man is galvanizing all over the country, all over the world. Coming back home to say what is happening, are you all dead? Or are you are still alive? Or are you going away? That is, is, that, is, that, is that the president? And you are still talking about what is happening. Go, take your, let Nigeria take up that taking cars. Forget the city. Obi is your right man. 
the man for your, for your age. You can carry the young men of this country. I have seen enough to test that. I have seen enough, and I know enough of all other these candidates. But when we get to the clearing now campaign, we, we, we say all that. Pa Debanjod, for, for the sake of time, let me interrupt and actually agree with you. This, as the saying goes, you would hope to live in a country where the elders are planting trees that they don't expect to ever uh, receive shade from. And we watch as Nigeria tries to write itself on the right pages of history, but it seems that uh, we're still trying to get our act right. Speaking of floods, um, you mentioned this earlier. Everyone watched uh, a couple weeks back as uh, multiple states were flooded. Kogi, Benue, Eboni, Jigawa, Kano, Adamawa, you name it. Um, they're underwater. They're, people's livelihoods are being affected. Uh, it's devastating. Cholera is on the rise. Currently, the discussion is about uh, the food crisis that we will inevitably face due to the fact that mass amounts of farmlands are underwater as we speak. We also know that the floods could have been mitigated to a certain ex extent due to the lack of a creation of a dam on our own side. Now, we, we, were into, we, are, we have a deal with the uh, Cameroonian government they built their own Lagdo Dam, and we were supposed to do the same on our side. Obviously, they let water release every once in a while, and it has flooded into uh, the states in Nigeria, which I'm sure you're aware of. My question now is, how do we hold our politicians' feet to the fire in terms of doing the things they're supposed to do for infrastructure, seeing as how the fallout can be catastrophic in ways that weren't uh, seen before. This food crisis is surely going to make Nigerians uh, suffering hard with everything else going on in the country. How do we hold their feet to the fire to make sure that these dams they're supposed to be building, these roads that they're supposed to be fixing, get done? Thank you very much. When the head is rotting, the old body is rotting. That's why I say, it's a program as short as this is not enough for us to discuss all the problems of Nigeria. That's why it's the, it's the, it's the flag bearer. You see, you have mentioned many things that say, you also have been done by the past government, which is between the two principal parties. This has not been done. You could have had all this disaster, but you don't be to this degree. If you have had an intelligent and forward-looking government, that is why we are asking for a change. Not a change in the Navy from bad to worse. A change for the better. That's why uh, people like me at 94, I should be sleeping in my house, I shouldn't be hating any politics at all. But they, uh, uh, my children are ready to get for them. I uh, produce lawyers and doctors, but I have grandchildren. I have a children now who are out of university, three years, no job. I have relations who want to enter university, they have been looking for nine months. This is not the Nigeria that I fought for. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a loaded man, Mr. Those are all the questions you have asked. How is loaded in this question of getting the right person to be at the show? And when he gets there, that's what I'm going for. You tie them to their manifesto. And anybody who doesn't perform, send him away. And then, then make, make your bandage, make your vote count. And the moment they know that, people behave. Educate your people not to accept bribe to, to vote for. Those who are suffering in Lagos, they are saying, yeah, your mandate is signed. On what mandate? The schools are falling. They say they make a lot of progress at what cost? They make 100 million and send me 50 million for the people. The other 50 million, where are they? When we get to the election, we do all that. The top of our problem is to get the right man at the head. By the time we get the right man at the head, everything comes come to place. 
Fire Adebanjo, a Feni Ferry leader, thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. We do appreciate everything that you have said on the program. Thank you so much.